do a warm up and we'll do a little shoulder stuff and then we'll do some down dog base things. Unless, of course, my wrist gives out. It does seem to be giving me a little bit of grief today. So, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, you're, you're muted. Never mind. Hopefully, you can hear me. I'll try to project better. I'm thinking about getting a new headset. So inhale, stretch your arms out. Exhale, hands to your heart. Stretch to the front. And exhale, hands behind you. Clasp your fingers and lift your heart. Stretch your spine really good. And pivot over as you exhale. So hands coming up, head coming down. Just relax. Deep breaths. Kind of move your neck and chin about. A little circulation going. And then lift your ribs, sitting bones down, wind your spine back up, and upper body toward the ceiling, shoulders down, and stretch your spine in the back. Take a breath, just relax. And then inhale up, release your arms. And again, just take a moment to check your positioning. Let your bones be supporting you. And again, inhale, reach out. Keep those shoulders down. Hands to your heart. Stretch forward, shoulders still down. And then clasp the hands the opposite way. And again, lift your heart, stretch your head back, and pivot over. And just relax into your forward bend as deeply as you'd like this time. And release any tension. One more time, stack your way back up, heart toward the ceiling, stretch your head back, shoulders down, get that nice upper body back bend, warming things up. And then inhale to the top, release your arms, and just take a moment feeling where your circulation is working. Inhale the arms out, palms toward the ceiling, over your shoulders, go ahead and collapse. Bring your arms by your ears and your shoulders and sitting bones down. Keep your body facing the front and lean to the side. So get those ribs stretching apart. Push your foot down. Reach out through your hands. And don't forget to breathe. And then inhale to the center. Keep your shoulders down. Switch your hands around. Arms back by your ears. And again, stretch the spine and lean without twisting. Maximize that stretch along the side by pushing your foot down more and your hands and head over you. And then again, inhale back upright and release. Feel your sides and your spine getting ready for stretching the spine apart for our twist. So arms up, palms toward the ceiling, over your shoulders, clasp the elbows and Pull the arms back again and shoulders down. Sitting bones down also, ribs in, stretch it up, and exhale for your twist. Lengthen, stretching, breathing, and on an exhalation, come over. So deepen into your forward bend as much as you like on this side. See if you can keep the weight even on both feet. And then keep in your twist and work your way up. And lift your heart. Remember, be gentle on your low back while you're twisted. Shoulders down. And then inhaling, come upright. Exhale to the center. Switch your arms around. And again, shoulders down, arms by your ears. Stretch your spine apart for the twist. And exhale into it. Breathe, lengthen it. And pivot over, exhaling. And again, just deepen as much on this side as you want. Again, evening out the weight on both feet as much as you can. And then slowly work your way back up and into that upper body for your back bend. Always careful with your low back. Elbows back, looking up, and chest expanding. And then inhale up, exhale to the center. Arms up, that's swan dive. So arms shoulder level, palms toward the floor. 
chest and chin lead, and then tuck your chin back in, and see if you can get your body parallel to the floor. Sitting bones and crown reaching away, lengthen and breathe, and then drop into ragdoll, just hanging. Let your body just lift through the sitting bones, letting the back of your legs get a good stretch. Tuck in your chin. Pull your arms behind your legs if you want a little extra low back stretching. And then release your arms and roll your way back and into mountain pose. So take a moment there, feeling your body getting a little bit more stimulated. So bring your hands up, chest level, heart level, elbows out to the side at shoulder level. So we're gonna pull the elbows back, keeping everything shoulder level as much as you can, and then reconnect the fingertips, and then fling your arms out to the back and back to the front. So you can do this a little faster, or you can keep doing it slowly, it's up to you. Inhaling and exhaling, inhaling and exhaling. So doing whatever is working for you, kind of working those shoulders out a little bit, breathing, you can keep the arms at shoulder level while you're going through that whole range of motion. And just feel the front of your body expanding. Keep the shoulder blades down, ribs in and up, and don't forget, of course, to breathe with it. And then release back into mountain pose. Kind of feel the circulation a little more through that upper body. And let's lift the wrists a little bit because we're going to be on the, on the hands with the wrist bent for a while. So just first let's circle them and then circle the other way. And then bring one hand out, put your thumb inside, fingers wrapped around, make a fist. Keep the arm at shoulder level, the other arm, you can do whatever you want. And then tighten that fist, really tight. And then let the fingers go gently and slowly like you're the National Geographic flower bloom. So just slowly releasing the fingers and spreading it out and then pulling the fingers back and pressing out through the heel of your palm and then shake it all out. And release. So lots of more circulation through that arm, hopefully through the hand too. And of course, other side. Arm comes out, thumb inside, fingers wrapping around, tense and tight, and then get that bud really good and tight. So squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. And then you're the flower blooming. So slowly releasing those fingers. Just petals unfurling and spreading out. As it gets open, just spread the fingers wider, pull the fingers back, press the heel of the palm out, maximize that flower bloom, and shake it out. And again, now pose. Kind of feel your arms a little bit more stimulated. And then clasp your fingers, Press the palms away with the hands out straight, elbows straight. Bring them up overhead. Keep pressing the palms up toward the ceiling. Don't forget, ribs are in and up, sitting bones and shoulder blades are down. And then bring the hands to one side and back up and to the other side. And back up. Out in front with the palms away from you. Turn the palms in. So the heel, or the backs of the wrists are pushing away, and then release. And then clasp the hands the other way. And again, press it out. Arms up, one side, back to the middle, to the other side, back to the middle, and out. Reverse it, press the base of the wrists away. And release. So just kind of move your fingers, move your arms a little bit. Noticing how that's a little more perhaps stimulated. 
and then stretch up, and we're going to go down to the mat. So come on into child's pose for our transition. Hips toward your heels, hands, palms up, and forehead forward. And just relax and separate your knees if you need more breathing room or bring them together and get that back stretching out a little more through the lower back. So just breathe, tuck in your chin, and then bring your arms out in front. Plant the palms, come on up onto your hands and knees. Get those knees right under your hips, feet straight back. Come up on your fingertips, we're going to get the hands planted really well. So knuckles down, base of the fingers down, whole palm down, heel of the palm down. Fingers are spread and connected and you're really supported through those hands. Now remember, you can pick them up and circle your wrists anytime you need to. If you need to, you can fold the mat or a pillow under, your, under the heel of your palm with the fingertips off so that you don't have quite the bend in your wrist. Or you can do that thumb inside, fingers wrapped around, and the ring part of your finger goes down, which gets rid of that bend to your wrist entirely. So, connect into your palms or however you're doing it. And bring your feet right straight back from your knees. Tuck your toes under. Lift your knees just barely off the floor and slide back into the base of your toe. So you're shifting a little bit toward the back of your body. And then pull those ribs all the way toward your thighs. Keep your arms right next to your ears. Lift your hips. Drop your heels. And you should be in a V-shape. So remember, wrists, elbows, shoulders, and hips line up. Lift the sitting bones up toward the ceiling. Drop the heels toward the floor. They probably won't get there, but that's okay. And just stretch up through the sitting bones. And then lift your heels and slowly bend your knees back to the mat. Slide back into child's pose. Release those wrists and take a moment to relax. So we're going to do that several times and we're going to do variations with it. So once again, bring the hands out, just plant the palms, come on up, get your fingers all connected, tuck your toes right behind your knees, right under your hips. Come back into the base of your toes, knees up, pull back, and lift up into down. And then bend one knee and press the other heel further toward the floor. And then reverse it. Heel coming as much toward the floor on that straight leg as you can. And do that a couple times just to get those hamstrings stretching out a little bit. And then back up on your toes, lift high, drop the heels, and stretch. And then again, up on your toes, knees to the mat or the floor, sink back. And again, just release those wrists, give them a good circle if you need to, and relax. So take a moment, breathe. And one more time, arms straight out from your shoulders, come up onto your hands and knees, knees under your hips, feet straight back. Get those fingers, palms, and hands connected. Really good support this time. Toes under, and again, coming up into your down dog. Same way, ribs in, hips up, heels down, arms next to your ears. Okay, so this time we're going to bring the right foot up toward the ceiling. Just bring it as high as you'd like to go and stretch out through the base of your toes. The other hip leg, the leg is straight, heel going toward the floor. Your arms are still, or ears are still right next to your arms, head reaching toward your hands, upper body still straight. So from the wrists through the elbows, shoulders, hips and leg, everything should be in as straight a line as you can get. And then bringing that foot down, come back into your down dog reposition if you need to. 
but of course we're going to balance it with the other leg. So just bring that other leg up. So keep both hips facing the floor equally and the heel of the straight leg is down, pressing toward the floor. You're still pushing up back through the sitting bones evenly, hands both supporting it evenly, and that leg reaching way out. And then keeping the hips even, bring the foot back down. And again, as you get back into your down dog, just stretch those sitting bones up, shoulder blades toward your hips, and hips toward the ceiling. And then up onto your toes, and back down into child's pose, releasing your wrists and shoulders again. Take a few moments to breathe and relax, and allow your body to adjust. And the arms come out again, pivoting up, knees under your hips, feet straight back. Get those hands situated and connected, and tuck your toes. And again, lifting your knees, pull back through the ribs, up through the hips, down with the heels. And find your down dog. So we're going to do something similar this time, but it's going to be a little bit more of a side stretch. So get connected into your left foot, kind of press the heel down. We're going to bring that right leg up again, just like we did. But this time we're going to open the hip. So bend the knee, push the foot behind you, and kind of look under your arm to the side as you're doing that. So take a moment, get into that side stretch of your body. That leg that's down, the heel is still going toward the floor. Your upper body is still from your wrist, shoulders, and hip going straight to your knee. And the only thing that's bent is the knee with the foot going behind you. And then straighten it out, pivoting back so the foot is, or the hips are even toward the floor. Stretch that leg out. And again, bring the foot down, back into down dog. Take a moment and adjust. You can release your wrists if you need to. And of course, we're going to do that to the opposite side. So head reaching toward your hands, sitting bones up toward the wall, ribs up toward your spine and heart, and shoulder blades toward your hips, your waist. And then bring the other leg up and down. Stretch it out straight first, and then bending the knee. Bring it into that side stretch, looking under the arm on the opposite side, getting the whole side of your body nice and stretched open. And again, maximize that heel down toward the floor on that other leg, hands evenly supporting you, and opening through the side, through the whole spine as you're in that twist. And then even it out, hips even toward the floor, straighten the leg and pivot it down. Stretch into your down dog, come up on your toes, drop your knees and sink back into child's pose. So take a few moments there, just breathing. Again, circle your wrists as much as you need to. You wanna make sure that you're not overdoing it. And we're going to do one more version. This one's a little bit more complex. So if you want to stick with one of the versions we've already done, you know that is always an option. So once more, hands out to the front, palms pointing, coming up. Get those knees right under your hips, feet straight back. Fingertips, knuckles, base of the hands, the heel of the palms, everything really well connected on this. And then once again, tuck your toes, lift your knees, come back onto the base of your toes, so it's not just the toes there, and lift your hips, straighten the legs, get your down dog nice and firm. And once again, we'll start with the right leg. So bring that right leg up, and we're gonna bend the knee again, looking to the side and coming into that side stretch. Stay there if you want to or bring that foot behind you, lift your arm and come into the flip the dog. Yeah, so your belly should be up toward the ceiling, that hand behind you, 
stretching away and only one hand supporting you, both feet supporting. Lift through the hips. And then to get out, bring your hand back to the floor, slide around on that foot on the floor, bring the leg back up, and down to the mat. And again, find your down dog position, get really nicely spread and situated. Sink the heels, remove that wrist that you are on if you need to, and then really reconnect into the hands completely. And of course, you know what we're doing next. Yes, we're going to do it to the other side. It's a little bit more energetic than some of the things we do. So be prepared. So again, lift the sitting bones. Lift that left leg. Heel sinking on the right leg. Bend the knee. Look to the side. Stay in that side stretch. Or flip your dog. Hand foot to the floor. Hand coming up. And hips lifting. Maximize that if you are, as much as you want. And then the hand comes down, the foot on the floor twists around, that leg lifts, everything re-squaring through the hips, and bring your foot down. Find your down dog, get really stretched out, head and sitting bones are reaching away, and again, lift onto the toes, knees to the mat, and back into child's pose. So take a moment in child's pose. Just release those wrists, nice circles. Relaxing and releasing everything. Take a few breaths there. Just relax. And then sit up on your heels. Bring your legs out in front and to the end of the neck. So go ahead and allow yourself to come into staff position. Ribs in and up. Bring your hands, fingertips toward your body, under your shoulders. We're going to bend the knees and bring the feet flat on the floor. And we're going to lift up into reverse table. So again, a little bit of work for your wrists, so be gentle if you need to. So get those knees right above your hips and your shoulders right above your wrists. Knees, knees, no, knees right above your ankles. Knees above your ankles, straight out from your hips. Shoulders above your wrists, and you can tuck your chin in a little bit, or if you want to, you can drop your head and look up a little bit more toward the ceiling. It's up to you. So shoulder blades are still toward your waist. That lower back is still supported with that core, ribs in and up toward your heart, and the hips are lifting toward the ceiling. See if you can get your body nice and flat on the top. And then exhale, sink your hips down, and stretch your legs out. Release your arms, and again, circles for those wrists, because we did a lot with them today. And then, roll onto your back. So just take a moment there, recline integration, kind of move around, getting your lower body back relaxed. Get those shoulders down, shoulder blades toward the floor. And just kind of move your fingers, hands around a little bit. Deep breath in, just exhale and relax. So for our twist today, we're going to do the extended leg version. So press your sitting bones towards your heels, get your back connected, and bring your right leg up toward the ceiling. Or one leg, if you did the other one, it doesn't matter. So hands right at T position, palms up, foot pressing toward the ceiling, out through the base of the toes and the heels evenly, nice straight leg, kneecap toward your thigh, tighten the front of your thigh. And then roll all the way to the left side, or toward that opposite side. Hands together on the floor in front of you, foot all the way down. Bring the foot toward your, the right foot toward your left hand. Hands still at shoulder level. See if you can hold your toes or your foot. 
and bring that right hand right above your shoulder to the ceiling with the palm open. Now look at your hand. If you can't hold your foot, just hold the leg so that that stays down for your lower back twist. <clears throat> and then lowering the hand, the back of the hand behind you toward the floor. Keep it at shoulder level. Don't let it go down towards your hip or up above your head, but straight out from your shoulder. And just let gravity pull you into the twist, turning your head to look toward that arm behind you. So as you get into your twist, just maximize by pulling your foot or your leg down for that lower back. Shoulder coming toward the floor, hand coming toward the floor for that middle back, and head turning for your neck and shoulder going into the twist. So just maximize or minimize. Remember, gravity will do the work. You don't have to force that hand or arm toward the floor at all. Just allow your body to release and relax as you breathe. Deepening your twist by exhaling and releasing the ligaments along the spine. So let the poppies and adjustments occur if they do. Don't worry about anything as long as you're not forcing yourself into the twist. So a few deep breaths here. And then releasing that hand from your foot or leg. Roll onto your back. Get your sacrum connected. Flex the heel. Use your core for support as you slowly lower the leg to the mat. And just take a moment there and breathe. So kind of feel the circulation through your spine, through your body. And then again, sitting bones toward your heels, and we'll do the other side. So bring that opposite foot up, flex the heel, press it away. Keep your body connected, and then roll all the way to what is this, the right side. So get your whole side down, the foot comes out, bring it up toward your hand and hold the foot or toes if you can, otherwise hand on your leg just to keep it in the lower back version of the twist. And then keeping your head down, if it's not, make sure you're patting under it so you don't stress your neck. I always forget to mention that. Hand palm forward, straight up above your shoulder. Keep looking at it, keep it at shoulder level as you lower it behind you into the twist. Again, turn your head toward that arm behind you as much as your neck and shoulder need. Let the arm come down. If the hand doesn't make it to the floor, that's okay. Just let gravity do the work as you relax. And just breathe, stretch out through the foot that's in front of you. And hold the foot or the leg to keep that lower back in the twist. The more your hand and shoulder come down, that's your middle back in the twist. The more you turn your head, that's your neck and shoulder in the twist. Remember, minimize where you need to, maximize where it feels right. And of course, exhale and release. Let the ligaments relax, let the whole spine twist maybe a little bit more as it becomes ready. But remember, never force anything in a twist. Deep breath, just releasing all the tension. And releasing the leg or foot, roll onto your back. Again, resituate everything and leaning with the heel, core activated to control that release, bring your body back into corpse position. Hands, palms up at your sides, and sacrum releasing down into the floor. Shoulders relaxing as well. Just kind of move your head, your neck. Breathe deep, and just relax. If you need to circle those wrists, maybe a time or two still, go ahead and do that. Just Relaxing your shoulders and your whole body. With each breath, just let your body grow heavy, sinking into that surface beneath you. Deepening into that earth embrace. And relaxing. And as your body relaxes, just let it go. No need to pay attention to your body at all. Just let Mother Earth support. 
And as you release awareness of your body, notice the other thoughts come into your mind. And just let them go as well. No need to remember the past. No need to anticipate the future. There's nothing we need to focus on at this moment. No thought that needs awareness. Just let them go. Deep breaths. Just exhaling the thoughts along with the tension. And as your body relaxes deeper into the open place, and your thoughts float more easily away without awareness, just allow your attention to find the peace within and feel your attention, feel your awareness, feel your body and your mind. Just be peace. And if that relaxation feels good this morning, keep relaxing. Otherwise, draw energy and awareness back to the moment, to the room, to your body. And just begin stretching it gently wherever and however it needs. When you're ready for your yoga hug of appreciation, just bend your knees, press your back down, draw the knees toward your heart. Give yourself that appreciative yoga hug. Letting your body know you appreciate all the work it did for you today. And let your body know that big weekend coming up, it's going to be appreciated even more as you go through that celebration this weekend. And then when you're ready, roll to the side and get ready for the day and weekend ahead. Thanks for joining me this morning.